Hi, we're back again, and we have another very interesting guest this morning, and her name is Susan Lowe, and she's an author of some very interesting material. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, nice to so meet you. So glad to have you come in. Thank you. I'm really excited about talking about Josie, A Story of Faith and Survival, my book. Oh, and, and this is, uh, is this your first book, or... So it is my first book. It is your first book? I'm working on a couple of others, but it was my first uh, published book. And what, what started you wanting to write? You know, I have, I've wanted to write since I was a small child. Oh. I used to um, write newsletters for my Barbies, and I would spend so much time doing that <laughs> that I would sometimes never get around to playing with them. <laughs> so writing has been something that's been dear to my heart. Um, Josie is my mother's story, oh. and it is a true story. It takes place in post-World War II Yugoslavia, right after Hitler has left the country. Oh. Uh, the, um, first the Russians came through, and then uh, Marshal Tito and his men came in. And Marshal Tito's goal was to um, eliminate anyone of German ethnicity out of the country of Yugoslavia and my family was German. So they were, along with millions of others, uh, Germans in um, Central Europe at that time, were put into concentration camps. And Josie, at the age of four, um, she and her older brother were separated from their family and sent oh. to a concentration camp. Oh gosh, that's horrible. I, I, every time I hear about it, you know, it's just some, something I don't want to believe, but it's true. It's, these people went through that. There were, well, as Hitler was horrific to the Jews, um, there was a lot of hate in the world at that time for anyone of German ethnicity. They, they were associated with Hitler's uh, atrocities, and um, as a result of it, there were people who believed that all Germans should pay for Hitler's crimes. Good Lord. And as we know, you know, wars um, often are not fought on a battlefield. They're fought with real people who are living in towns who had nothing to do with the decisions that were made, but they pay the consequences. Oh, it's always mm -hmm. the civilians that pay, mm -hmm. pay for it. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they get the, the worst part of it because there's something about being put through something like that that is just so hard to, to take and so hard to handle. So I'm sure that this woman, your mother, must have been a very brave lady. She was, um, she was a survivor. A, was survivor. a survivor, good. And you know what prompted the actual writing of the book is that after my mom passed away, I had the privilege of attending um, a group that used to meet annually in Southern California called the Glogon Survivors, and Glogon mm -hmm. Cousins. And they were um, of Germans that had survived the concentration camps or had family members who had mm -hmm. that met annually to kind of reconnect and, and uh, stay as a family, to reminisce about some of the positive things and, and of course some of the pain. And one of the things that really struck me as I was meeting with them was that in spite of the horrendous things that they experienced or their family members experienced, the most painful thing was that no one acknowledged that it happened. And um, you know, the more I thought about it, I felt like this is a story that needs to be told. To well, honor all of us. I, I can understand that because I've never really heard that much about what happened to the German people after the war was over. Mm -hmm. And it, it had to be horrendous. It, it certainly was in countries like Yugoslavia, Romania, Hungary. Mm -hmm. um, one, almost overnight, um, they were ripped out of their homes. Now, Immediately after Hitler left, there were some Germans who left the country because they were fearful of what would happen next. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mother's family did not. They were, um, they lived in Yugoslavia for seven generations. They saw themselves as loyal Yugoslavian citizens. 
and um, they believed that you know this was their homeland no matter what was coming they were going to show the new government that mm -hmm. uh, they were good Yugoslavians and unfortunately that was not Marshal Tito's plan so uh, it was a decision they would regret and overnight they were uh, ripped out of their homes the most of the town's men were murdered on the streets. Oh my God. They um, were told that they were building an airport um, and it turned out they were actually digging a mass grave for themselves. <sighs> After that, uh, they came through and they pulled people out of their homes, mostly women were left and children. Um, my mom was four when they were ripped out of their homes. Her older brother was 12. Uh, they were sent to Franzfeld concentration camp, and the adults that were with the elderly and the mm -hmm. adults that were able-bodied were to work as slaves for the new occupiers of the village. And so initially, they didn't know what my mother didn't know what happened to her family. Uh, her mother didn't know what had happened to them. And I'm also a licensed uh, marriage family therapist, and so I've oh. I've dealt with a lot of post-traumatic stress victims yes. and in writing the book it oddly occurred to me for the first time my goodness all of the post-traumatic stress that they had as a result explained um, some of the issues for them in adulthood yeah we sometimes we think we have problems and really <clears throat> they're not that bad if you consider what problems other people have had <laughs> we've been really blessed in this country Oh, that's for mm -hmm. sure. We're spoiled. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's true. And um, at age six, my mother was separated from her brother and put into a death camp. And I'd like to read a little section of that if you're... Yes, please do that. that my gosh, a little kid. Yes. Um, let me just set up this piece. As I said, she's six years old. Uh, she's been separated from her brother, taken to um, a death camp, and she was very ill at this point in the story. There was a, um, a death wagon driver who picked up the bodies of those that died regularly, and he would sometimes pass messages on to other family members in different parts of the, the state. And he got word to my mother's family that she was dying. She had uh, boils all over and he was concerned for her. So her mother um, managed to travel by foot with another woman to get her children, both of their children, out of this death camp and um, bribed the guards to get through. Of course the guards didn't think she'd ever get out again and she escaped wow. with my mother and um, this woman and her two children at this point in the story are journeying, journeying to freedom, they think. And uh, the German word for mother is Mutter, so mm -hmm. I use that in the text. Okay. Josie heard a twig snap and guards shouting as they surrounded the little group of women and children. She gasped as one of the soldiers shoved Olga down into her dress, dress. You filthy woman, he shouted, where do you think you're going? Olga's two daughters clung to their mother and Josie and her mother watched in horror as a guard swiftly shot Olga and her children. No, no, screamed Josie repeatedly as the guards kept shooting. The bodies bounced, making strange movements as the bullets hit them. Josie's mother let her slip from her back and stood firmly in front of her. Clinging to her mother's dress, Josie struggled to stand. She peered at the three lifeless bodies as their blood soaked into the snow. A red outline formed around them and grew fuzzy as the scarlet color seeped through the motionless bodies lying on what was now an icy grave. Everything seemed to move in slow motion as the guards turned and pointed their guns at Josie and her mother. Josie's weak legs collapsed and she dropped to her knees, her entire body shaking. She could hear the hateful, or could see the hateful faces of the guards and could hear that they were screaming, but she couldn't hear the words. 
she heard her mother saying over and over, my God, protect us. My God, protect us. A guard with a mustache hit her mother across the face with the butt of his gun, knocking her into the snow beside Josie. Just as he swung his back to hit her a second time, another guard stepped in, be in between them. He yelled, no. We will take them back to Rudolfsnod. They can tell others that this is what happens to those who try to escape. And I'll, I'll leave it there. Oh my gosh, you've got to buy the book to find out what happened. Oh, that's fabulous. Your writing is beautiful, so descriptive. Thank you. It was important to me to tell the story through Josie's eyes. Uh, I did a lot of research. We wanted to make sure that it was um, co correct historically. Mm -hmm. And we're fortunate to find um, a couple of professors of Eastern European history who were able to validate that the experience was not just my family's experience, but that of millions of other ethnic Germans in that region during that time. Oh my gosh. That was, I'm so glad that's behind us and just pray nothing comes up like that again. No, 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 no more of that. Yes. <laughs> anyway, that book is fantastic. And where can people get it? It's available online at Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, um, Walmart. It's uh, in Majesty Bibles and Gifts on Herndon and uh, Cedar. And you can ask any bookstore to order a copy if they don't already have it available on their shelf. Fantastic. I'm so glad you came in. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. Thank you. It's nice to meet you, and I appreciate you having me on. Oh, thank you. Okay. okay. We'll be right back.